Sadie, did you win Prius? I understand you told me that. You did. Don't like me. All right, so. Okay. Yes, but. Oh, I didn't hear Because there was other things that were that I won, and I got more votes for other things. Um, yeah. How many how many things can every senior have like maximum? Only one. one couple. That's kind of crazy. Okay. So um, the other day we were talking about um, finding lim limits without knowing what the graph looks like, right? So there were two types of questions that we talked about. We talked about questions where you had polynomials or rational functions that you could just plug in the number and you get an answer. That's the answer. And then we had problems that were piecewise functions. And in that case, you have, like, if it's at the point where the pieces change, you have to plug the x value into the left piece and plug the x value into the right piece and make sure you get the same answer. Any questions on any of that stuff? Okay, so today we're going to talk about what happens if you substitute the number in and you don't get a real number, like, you get zero denominator or something like that. Okay, so this is uh, limits of rational functions. And the question is, what if? So, for example, what if you have something like the limit as x goes to uh, 5 of x squared minus 25 over x minus 5? So, you definitely can't just substitute this number in and get a number, get an answer back, because it's, it's, it ends up being 0 over 0, which is undefined. Okay? So what you have to do is you actually have to think of when we talked about um, properties of rational functions, like when you graph them and things like that, you have to remember that this actually is a situation where it's a function with a hole in it, right? And remember if a rational function Um, suppose the rational function was like f of x over g of x. So if you have this rational function, f of x over g of x, um, the rational function is um, 0 over 0 at x equals a. That's what I have here, right? That's what I have going on. If I substitute 5 into the top, I get 0. If I substitute 5 into the bottom, I get 0. So, in other words, IE, which is Latin for uh, yeah. id est. Id est. Uh, which means that is. Which means that is. Yeah. So, id est, so. f of a equals 0, and g of a equals zero. That's the only way that this, what I'm describing is going to occur. So if that happens, then um, the rational function actually has a hole at A. And if you remember, when we 
talk about limits, if there's a hole in the function, then the y value is just like the y coordinate of that hole, right? That's what we talked about last week and the stuff before that, is if you have a limit of a function and it happens to be a point where there's a hole, then the limit is just the y coordinate of the hole. And if you remember from before that, when we were talking about how to graph rational functions, to find the y coordinate of the hole, all you have to do is just factor the top, factor the bottom, cancel the common factor, then plug in the y value. So that's all you're gonna do here, okay? This is just equal to the limit as x goes to five of, I can factor the top, x minus five, x plus five. And I can factor the bottom, x minus five. That. I can then cancel the common factor and then just substitute five in and I get 10. If I substitute 5 into this function, I get 10. So this original function actually looks exactly like this line, y equals x plus 5, except there's a hole at 5. This graph actually looks like this. It's going along, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's just going along, minding its own business, and then there's a hole, and then it just continues going along. Wait, That's what this you, function actually looks like. Why does it if you substitute 5 in oh, okay. for x, okay. Okay. into the stuff that's left, you get 10. So this is what that function actually looks like. These functions are completely indistinguishable, except at that point where it's undefined for this function, and it's not undefined for this function. So by canceling that common factor, you're finding a function that looks exactly the same, but it doesn't have that hole in it. So the y value of this function at five is the same as the y coordinate of the whole of this function at five. Do we understand the theory here? Bottom line, what you need to do is if you get zero over zero, simply factor the top, factor the bottom, cancel common factors, and then try again. Plug the number in again. And if you get a number, then you're done. Okay, let's do a couple more examples. Suppose you had something like uh, the limit uh, as uh, x goes to 1 of x squared plus x minus 2 over x squared minus 4x plus 3. So this is definitely the same type of question, right? If I substitute in, um, if I substitute in one to the top, I get one plus one minus two, that's zero. If I substitute one into the bottom, I get one minus four plus three, that's zero also. So all I'm gonna do is, one is x goes to one, I'm gonna factor the top, x plus two, x minus one, and I'm gonna factor the bottom, x uh, minus three, x minus 1. Cancel common factors and then try again. If I try again, I mean take 1, substitute it in for x there, substitute it in for x there. So I get 1 plus 2, which is 3, over 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. That's the answer. That's the y coordinate of the whole in this function at 1. Okay, does that make sense? So I factor the top and bottom, cancel the common factors, and then plug the number in again. Sometimes the factoring might be a little bit uh, more complicated or whatever, or different. Like what if I have something like the limit as x goes to negative two of negative two x minus four over x cubed plus 2x squared. And this isn't really any harder. You just have to remember how to factor from algebra 1. So this would be taking out a common factor of negative 2. You get x plus 2. And then the bottom would be taking out a common factor of x squared. And you get x plus 2. 
So you see, this common factor is what was causing the trouble. It was make, that's what was creating the situation where you had zero over zero. The fact that when you plug negative two into this factor, you get zero. So they just cancel and then there's no more problem. So the answer would be negative two over four. Negative one half is the answer. Okay. Um, how about something like this? Uh, what if I have the limit as x goes to 3 of um, x squared minus 9 over x cubed minus 9x? This is as hard as I thought it was when I looked at it. Um, so, you could do this by factoring the top, x minus 3x plus 3, and then factoring the bottom, which actually this would factor into two pieces, right? It would be like first a common factor, which if I had done that originally, I could have seen that I would just cancel those. But anyway, right. that's why I. Right, so, this ends up being x times x minus 3 times x plus 3. And then all those factors cancel. Now you have to be careful on a problem like this. The answer is not three. This x is left in the denominator. So in the answer, it has to be like, like this stuff didn't cancel as nothing. It canceled as one, right? So right. this is like one over x. The answer is one third. So just be careful in a situation like that. It's a common mistake that people just plug three in and they, they'll say the answer is three. That's all that's left. But the three's in the denominator, so it has to be one third. Okay. Any questions on this stuff? I don't know. Is that... Oh yeah. Okay. So the reason why, yeah, uh, the reason why is the delta math section that involves these types of problems also involves another thing that, uh, like, what if, what if you don't get zero over zero? Um, but you still get a zero denominator, like that type of thing. So that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. Like it's possible, like what if it's something like um, the limit is x goes to 2 of x plus 5 over x minus 2. I mean, here I get zero denominator, but I don't get a zero numerator, and I can't factor this or do anything algebraically to like fix the problem. So, um, yeah, so that's what we'll talk about. Maybe I'm lying. Maybe. About the fact that we talk about it tomorrow? Yeah, we're actually going to talk about this on Monday. Tomorrow we're going to talk about something else, which will enable us to do assignment. But it's not, excuse me, that's not going to be a Delta Math assignment. It's going to be an IXL assignment. No, I hate IXL. Oh, ooh, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I feel bad. <laughs> there's, there's some gaps in Delta Math. Um, that, uh, you know, we need Email the guy. We need just do it better. <laughs> the guy. Yeah, wasn't it like one person yeah. who started it? Yeah, yeah. He's actually very receptive. But uh -huh. this <laughs> year, this year in particular, he's gotten a lot of requests for like new, new content. I'm sure. And he's working on it, but he, it just takes a lot. I've actually, like everything that we've come across that we have to use IXL for, I've emailed him and been like, what about this? Like, yeah, I'll get to it. Cool. Stop bothering me, Skip. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, any questions on on that? This type of stuff. We can just All right. So tomorrow we'll do something else, and then you'll be able to do a whole assignment. I know you're very anxious Either. about not having homework tonight, but you'll be okay. Yeah. You'll you'll find something else. I hate I still All right. That's all I got. I'm going to stop recording. All right, back to writing my speech. <laughs>